The eyes, they look, but the brain, it sees. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to show you something today, but I want you to see it through your hearts and brains, and not through your eyes. So actually, sit back and close your eyes. Go ahead, I'll wait. Now, I want you to imagine a really, really deep hole. A hole that's so deep, it feels bottomless. Can you see it? Now I want you to imagine that you, yes, you, are falling down that hole. What happens? Your heartbeat, it quickens, you start to panic. You try to hold on to the imaginary walls of the hole, but you can't. You're pulled down by gravity and engulfed by darkness. You open your eyes and grab your chair handles. The darkness is replaced by light. And for a second, you appreciate the reality of being stable and not falling. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, you have just experienced life. Life, in its simplest essence, can be described as a free fall down an infinitely deep yet very narrow hole. Everybody is born into their unique position in the whole of life, a position that they have inherited from their parents. So, where in this whole of life did my life start? Well, I grew up a Palestinian immigrant. The result of a conflict I had no part in. Growing up, my family was your average working class immigrant family. So, according to the whole analogy, I was born at the lower parts of the hole, but I never actually hit the bottom. Keep in mind, though, that it was, it was always within view distance. You can imagine how that gets scary very quickly. When I think of the whole analogy, I'm taking back to a time when I was six. At the time, I was uh, waiting for my dad to come back from work. I was excited yet anxious. He walks in through the door with a very tired look on his face, but he smiles when he sees me. He always smiled when he, see, when he used to see me. And he bends down to hug me, and I cling on to him. He starts heading towards his bedroom to get some rest when I hold his hand and point to the TV and say, Dad, Dad, can I get this toy? It was a simple remote-controlled car of the uh, car's protagonist, Lightning McQueen. I'm pretty sure you're all familiar with the Disney movie. It was a very simple toy at the time, but every time I passed by the Market Street, I used to stare at it so fascinated. I really wanted it at the time. My dad bent down and with sorrow in his eyes, and sadness in his voice said, son, if I could, I would give you the world, but you know, maybe not right now. That moment, I felt like I lost my grip on the holes, on, on the walls of the whole of life. I felt like I was plummeting towards the bottom, engulfed by darkness. But I saw the light at that moment. I made a promise to myself that I will never fall again. But how? How would I do that? How would I climb? The answer came the very next day. My dad walked back from work again, but with something in his hand this time. He calls me over and hands me over a notebook with Lightning McQueen on it. He bends down and says, son, in this world you may lose your toys, your most precious possessions, even your friends and family, but you will never lose the knowledge that you've garnered. That moment, my dad set course for my life years to come. He gave me the wisdom and the tools that I needed to climb up the whole of life. One may climb the hole with many means, money, fame, exceptional talent, even connections. But if a person doesn't have the needed knowledge, they will never reach the heights that they aspire to reach. Growing up, I was part of an Arabic-speaking family. English wasn't spoken very often in, around my household. And I grew up in Saudi Arabia, so um, in public, English, uh, Arabic uh, was mostly spoken there, not English. Coming to Cyprus, I was faced with a challenge, not knowing Greek or English. My dad's words rung in my ears. I fueled my life with knowledge and use the power of the internet 
to teach myself both Greek and English. Furthermore, thank you. Furthermore, I read essays and articles on history, and I came into contact with the various rich cultures of the world, all the way from my bedroom. I also used the power of the internet to teach myself about philosophy, logic, and politics, things that are unfortunately not taught today in schools. And that's what I want you to take from this. I want you for a second to think and assess what is helping you climb and what is pulling you down. You and I might be in very different positions in the whole of life. That's a fact. But the very fact is that we are both in it and we both have to make an effort to climb. Growing up, I do realize I didn't have many advantages. But I was lucky. I was lucky enough to have a great family, amazing parents, great friends, and the education that I needed to morph me into the person I am today. Success may mean different things for many people, but personally, my idea of success is being able to break my fall and climb up. But I don't want you to think of success as a race, where we tumble over each other and push others down so we can climb up. I want you to think of success as a collective motion towards the top of the hole. I want you to think of it as a coordinated motion. The whole of life might be unbelievably harsh to take on alone, but if we all work together, we can reach the heights we need to reach. I want to give my community back what it offered to me, and I want to fight the harshest fight with the people that I know. So in a few years, I aspire to become a doctor. Growing up, being a doctor and saving lives seems so noble. But now that I actually understand the whole analogy, and I understand the value of life, it represents something way bigger. It represents giving people another chance to climb. It represents giving people another chance to climb the top of the hole and reach new heights and innovate and change the way that we live. I am Faisal Alaydi, and today I told you my journey in this whole of life. I urge you to think, where are you in this whole of life, and how do you plan to climb? Thank you.